Bippy, man. You'll bet your sweet Bippy I did. Two more chapters, plus spooky Nega Zeth. Nega Scott. But first, patrons! Thank you, Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithy Carone, Gallant Aegis, the son of James, Lexar into Lap, and 42! Whew, all one breath. Now, chapter 23. Back to Shallan Strike Team. Gaz goes full Ghostbusters 2. Who told you to stop cut? They end up trapping the other Malwish woman in Shallan's armor, choking her out and stealing her clothes. Gaz? Shallan came ready with a wig, but Mask Lady apparently went to a stylist recently, so she'll just have to keep the hood up. Couldn't she summon Pattern and have someone do a little chop chop? Ooh, could she get out both Pattern and Testament as a pair of shard scissors? Either way, in she goes into the Ghost Blood's lair. Navani manages all the minor workings of the Tower Kingdom. Trade and economy with Sabariel, and emancipation plus supply lines with Aladar. That caste system is gonna have to come tumbling down eventually. It's definitely not going to linger over generations and significantly influence public policy in a negative way. The sibling warns of the danger of a shard going vesselless for too long. The evil, anyone? Rushu, the curiously hot ardent, demonstrates the rehoming of Flamespren. That increasingly important interlude from Way of Kings is mentioned, though they've been continuing their research, apparently. Flamespren like treats, and given that they're fundamentally shaped by human perception and cognition, particularly like cognitive treats. Flamespren's love language is words of affirmation and quality time, not physical touch. You'll learn that the hard way. Now, as a bit of a side note, you know how sometimes in popular media they'll introduce an unusually adorable character or creature that seems like a blatant merchandising catch grab? BB-8 in the new Star Wars, the Porgs in the new Star Wars, Baby Yoda in the new Star... Okay, maybe it's just Star Wars. I feel like we've finally gotten that with Bippy the sentient flame spren. Frankly, I'm in love. Give me art of this boy quickly. I've only had Arlo for a day and a half. But if anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. Also, confirmation on non-binary Rushu. Good for them! Hey, 17th Shard, has someone translated these yet? Chapter 24, our first Zeth flashback! Brandon actually read this two years ago at New York Comic Con, but we're definitely getting some new insights into it. Context! Wow! 11-year-old Zeth is dancing for a rock, with his sister playing the flute. The music was his dance partner. Wind made animate through sound. The flute was the voice of air itself. How literal are we talking here? And is this what Kaladin has to learn to do? We get a lot about Shin culture here. The designation of those who add. We learn from Vistum that farmers, or in Zeth's case, shepherds, are more like the nobility here. They get a splash of color in their outfits, and apparently dance for, but aren't allowed to touch, rocks. And we see here that Zeth's self-worth issues stem from childhood perfectionism. They live close to the mono Monastery of the Stone Wards? Are there nine monasteries, one for each sword? No, they talk about using the swords, plural, during raids, so there must be multiple here. Which is actually a change from Brandon's original reading. There used to be only one, presumably Yezrian's. Molly, the old blind ewe, finds another rock in the ground. I'd be scared too. <laughs> Though how are they coming up? We'll just have to read and find out. 